Hey Facebook, we're going to try something a little different here and see how this works. Trying on new software, but I thought while we did that, we're going to try a new platform and try something a little different for teaching and see what that looks like. I'm kind of curious myself of what this looks like, so I'm going to bring up my mobile and um, see what it looks like on this end. So give me a second so I can see what your comments look like. Uh, it's assuming anybody does comment in the first place. Give me a second. I want to pull this up here. There you go. Hey, it's actually there. It's actually working. So, let's see if I can see where comments may actually be. There we are. Cool. So, some of you who... Uh, know me in the worship world and in the leadership world know that I do something called um, worship leader cohorts and that's basically this thing that you'll see kind of ooh, wrong corner over here yeah worship and creative coaching cohorts I've done something for a long time called wheelieworship.com which came off of gotworship.net so I've been involved in like worship leading um, and in mentoring and coaching people for a long time. So as a part of that, I, uh, hey Bubba, I see you commenting there. Cool, that works. At least I know that works. Um, so as part of that, I get to I get to be involved in a lot of leadership coaching and leadership mentoring. So I've got a new thing that we began, I don't know how long ago, uh, called worshipcoaching.net and it's kind of spiraled into a lot of different areas not just worship coaching but I found that a lot of people that are in creative and even some other type of church leadership have gotten involved in that just to get basic coaching to begin with so I thought I wanted to do something more on video on a video driven platform on that website and to do that, I thought I wanted to experiment a little bit with Facebook Live videos and just doing some uh, weekly maybe videos and maybe even um, some daily stuff as time permits to be able to do that. So I'm trying out a new platform for, uh, for doing live. And this live platform also helps uh, to be able to do when our church goes live. So I'm trying out some software to see how that works. So in any case... Um, You'll see a few little nuggets of stuff, some technology, trying out some lower third stuff to see how that works out. Uh, if you're not already on other social platforms, you can follow me on Twitter at, at JasonTNA or on Instagram there. I'm actually starting to do more on Instagram. I've hated Instagram. I really have. Uh, when you're a 40-something-year-old guy that doesn't do much on Instagram and you just don't get it, you don't do much, but when all of a sudden... I've started to realize more and more of the world is on Instagram, then that's where I've been for the past little bit. And it's it's interesting seeing how many of you are engaging on Instagram. So I'm there too as well um, on at Jason Whitehorn. So anyway, there you go. So I see a few of you guys that are in here and uh, feel free in Facebook to comment because I'm going to ask you a question here in a minute. So get your crack your knuckles get your keyboard ready because I'm going to ask you a question that I want to get your involvement in and kind of figure out um, where you're at with an answer on something because we're going to talk a little bit about leadership and all of you in some way or f uh, fashion are leaders whether or not it's you're not maybe not in a church but you're in a job somewhere hey dad uh, if you're in a job somewhere in a family somewhere you're leaders but I want to talk to you about leading uh, your Vincents and finding your Vincents. So here's a, a question I want you to kind of think about for a little bit. Who's this guy? First off, just put a comment down there. Just, just who is this guy? First person that comes up with a comment gets a prize. It's not going to be any good prize because I have no good prizes. It'll be the first bit of pocket land I find. No, I'm kidding. But who is this person? Anyone know who that is? Well, 
What's the first thing you think of? Yep. There you go, Adam. So what's the first thing that you think of? Uh, any one word, anybody. That's Vincent Van Gogh. What's the first word that you think of when you think of Vincent Van Gogh? Any word, right, wrong, and different. Just one word. Um, somebody just throw out some, some popcorn phrases. What's the first word that you think of when you think of of Vincent Van Gogh. Any word, go. So if you're just joining us, we're just asking a quick little question. What's the first word, that's Vincent Van Gogh that you're seeing there on your screen. What's the first word that you think of when you think of Vincent Van Gogh? Should have like the Jeopardy theme music playing or something. Okay. Painter. Crazy. Adam, you were talking about Van Gogh, right? Not me. Just checking. So far we got that he's a painter, he's crazy, either that or we're checking on whether or not Adam's talking about me. I hope he's talking about Van Gogh. So any one word, painter, crazy. You can't just say yes. That doesn't mean whether or not you're talking about him or me, Adam. If you're just joining us, Jose, good to see you, man. Um, we've got, you see, uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Actually, it's Vincent Van Gogh, but anyway, uh, up on your screen. And we're just asking a real quick trivia question. Uh, just any one quick word that defines who Vincent Van Gogh is. So any word about him. Someone said uh, he's a painter. Someone else said crazy. But what word defines Vincent Van Gogh? Give people a quick, quick minute to answer that. No, Jamie, I definitely got my crazy from you. That's vice versa. If the shoe fits. <laughs> Alright. So, so far we've got Painter. We've got Crazy. I'll tell you, cra uh, crazily enough, um, most of the time whenever we do this, if I've done this with people, I get um, one of three things. And it helps if I don't limit it to one word. If I say write something down uh, about Vincent Van Gogh, I get one of one of three things. And maybe it hurt that I limited it to one word. But if I, if I were to say write something down about this guy, I would get um, painter, I would get crazy, so you guys already hit the first two, or I would get uh, ear. Because a lot of people remember what? That he cut his own ear off. Um, so those are the three things that people remembered about him. What about this? People remember that he's a painter. They remember that he's crazy. They remember that he cut his own ear off. But what if I told you this? Vincent Van Gogh was a pastor in training. Did you know that about him? He actually wanted to be a pastor. In fact, he went to the church to be such a pastor and got turned away. He was, in fact, a painter. In fact, this is one of um, his favorite paintings, or my favorite painting. It, it hangs right over here in my office. You can't see it there, but this is what that painting looks like. Uh, it's one of my favorite paintings. I've got a replica of it in my office. It's called A Starry Night. Um, and you can tell some of his, his passion for God in that painting. He actually painted this uh, just a few short months before he died. 
and the stars that are in there, the stars and the sun, that was his reverence and awe um, to God, to the Creator. Um, and yeah, Adam, he wanted to be a pastor. He he actually uh, petitioned to the to, to the clergy, to 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 the church, to be a pastor, and was told that he wasn't cut out to be a pastor. He actually, when he was out with the farmers and with people that just didn't fit in in life, I guess, um, he would very often minister to them in various ways. He was he was known often to cut up his own bed linens, bed linens to uh, provide bandages and tourniquets. Didn't sleep with uh, any of his own bed linens because he gave up all of his stuff for the homeless. Uh, now that in and of itself doesn't make him a pastor, but he believed heavily in the Bible. He believed heavily in God and wanted to go into the ministry. And when he went to the 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 church and said I want to be a pastor they looked at him and said you don't fit the bill he said you're not smart enough to be a pastor and that really shot him down it really killed a lot within him in fact I want you to notice something about this picture and it's the very reason why this picture hangs on the wall of my office what's something that you notice about this picture there, maybe I'll take you, give you a minute to look at the picture and see if you notice it. Never mind the, 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 all the stars and the sky and the sun. What's something that you notice maybe about the community that's there? What do you notice? Adam, take a look, man. What do you see there in the, in the community, in that little town? What do you notice? Something that you may see in common. Dave Priest, how you doing, buddy? We need to connect sometime. Yep, very much a steeple that's there. That's the church that's there. What else do you notice about the community? Hey, Doug, hope all is well with you. See, here's the one thing that's interesting to me. The entire city, the entire little sleepy town, every light is on in every single dwelling, in every single place, except where. In the church. The church has no lights. And I don't think it's surprising to a guy like Vincent Van Gogh. To Vincent, when he went to the church, he was turned away. A man who pursued after God, who wanted to pursue the ministry, who wanted to pursue clergy, but yet was told he didn't fit the part. He didn't wasn't smart enough to be clergy. But yet he was there in the fields doing the work of a missionary. Now, here's the thing. I keep this painting in my office. And I keep it for one very reason. I never, for myself and leadership, want the church to be like Vincent saw the church. I never want anyone to walk in to my office or to the church or to be seen as if they aren't good enough for any reason. So here, here's something I want you to keep in mind. Find your Vincents. Someone out there is viewed as um, a painter, crazy, or cut off his own ear, something crazy like that. When there's more to the story, there's absolutely more to their story. You see, there was more to the ear story. Um, believe it or not, we, we've, we've had more uh, history and data that tells us that he wasn't as crazy as we thought that he was. He actually had medical conditions 
that would account for his quote-unquote craziness as far as him cutting off his own ear. There is actually another painter that we would all know that he was really close friends with that he was doing fencing with, not fencing like putting up a fence, but fencing as in the, um, the sword fighting fencing version. And he parlayed his ear off and, and, and had an injury from that. And that would have caused his friend to have um, incurred jail time and imprisonment. And so to keep that from happening, Vincent allowed the story to go around that he had cut his own ear off. There, I mean, th these stories are now corroborated over the years to, to have been found to have been true. But yet the old story goes on that he cut his own ear off and that he was crazy. But yet we never know the story of what a godly man he was and how he wanted to go into the ministry. See, guys, there are Vincents within our church, our businesses, our corporations, wherever we're at in leadership, and we need to find our Vincents. Somewhere out there, there is somebody that we need to be pouring into. Every week at, at, at Grace Church, where I'm at in Indy, there is a young lady, um, couldn't tell you how old she is, um, and she has, and, and, and I, I, Grace here, Grace, please, if, I, if I'm going to get this wrong, I would say she probably has Down syndrome, um, and I would say she, she may have some, some other things um, uh, that are uh, going on um, medically in her life or, or, or other things. Sweetest girl in the world. Uh, every week when she comes comes up to the stage, she she's right there at the front of the stage. She she wants to give me a high five, and she always yells, "How are you? How are you?" Every week, and the very first week that she came uh, to Grace, she was right up there up front, and and it caught, kind of caught me off guard because she was turning around, and the next thing you know, she was, I mean, this little girl, I, I don't know how old she is. I mean, she's probably not even in her teens yet, for all I know. But she was cheerleading everyone. I mean, egging and encouraging everyone on to worship. And I love it every week when she gets up there. Because she's got more energy than half the people that come do on a Sunday morning. That's a Vincent. There are a lot of people that would probably tell people, um, that would probably tell someone like her, uh, would try to usher her away to get her away from the stage. I I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's a beautiful thing um, that she is encouraging people to a degree. She, she's not to a point where she's a distraction because one of our first jobs, if you're a worship leader or a worship pastor, one of your primary jobs needs to be to remove distractions. She's not a distraction. In a way, she's an encouragement and a blessing to people. She's a Vincent. Find your Vincents. Are there people within your church that, that, that say, I can't carry a tune in a bucket? Um, I, I can't play an instrument. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. There, there are ways that they can still be involved um, that, that would find it a blessing. Find ways that they can be a part. But more importantly, there are people that do have giftings that can be a part. So this isn't just a story about worship and being in a church because some of you go dude I'm not, I'm not a part of a church I don't know why you're talking to me I'm not a part of your audience there are Vincents that you have in your business in your scope of leadership and you need to find them and you need to not label them anymore as just being a painter crazy someone who cut their ear off because they have creativity and leaps and bounds beyond that in a story that you don't know get out Follow their story, get to know their story, because it is important. Find your Vincent today. Love you guys. Have a blessed and awesome day.